Radio 1. It's my special pleasure to introduce to you a special guest on the show this evening. It's Laszlo. How are you doing? Straight off the tube. Straight off the tube. So what happened? So you, you said to your people, don't I'm, get me a car, get the tube. I love the tube. And speaking that way made it just break down on me. Because in New York, the subways are filthy. <laughs> filthy. And here it's just amazingly clean. What? I can eat well, off the know, floor. Well, what line are you going on? Where, <laughs> where are you going? It's Wait, amazing. There's no clean tubes in London. They are much cleaner than we've got. Really? Yeah. Hello, chap. Let's go on the tube. It's yeah. not like that. It's hell down there sometimes. <laughs> Is it? it? It's awful. Are sometimes. you against public transportation? Are you a germaphobe? Absolutely not. But it's it's a necessary evil. You have to use it. But it's 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 not pretty. Do you carry the Purell so that you can constantly oh, yeah, cleanse so, yeah. your hands? Well, the, 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 yeah, I, I I suppose I have to. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome back to Radio One, Laszlo. It's a pleasure to have you back on the show. I think we last spoke maybe well, a couple of years ago, maybe. Yeah. And uh, it was when I was on maybe early breakfast, maybe even further away than that. But um, I just wanted to get you on the show initially because I'm a huge fan of, of Grand Theft Auto, which we talked about before. And people listening now will will know you from that game as well, I, I suppose, because you were on the... I mean, explain your story from that game and how you got involved in the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Yeah, I've worked with Rockstar Games for 11 years. First, uh, I was working in radio in the United States. And as, as you know, us radio people have huge psychological trauma <laughs> um, and always looking for acceptance and love, <laughs> if you will. Um, but I met one of the guys from Rockstar and they said we should do some, you know, comedy radio for this game that we've got coming where you can make fun of radio presenters. You can, yeah. you know, have fake commercials and, you know, American DJs are always like, hey, everybody, we're coming up at five, you know, that guy. And uh, so we said, um, let's do this for a game. And we did it for Grand Theft Auto 3 and I've worked with Rockstar ever since. And it, and it became a very, it came a very cult following. It was iconic that you could pick your radio station. You could have Laszlo, this, this person who we didn't realise was really Real, really? I didn't either for years. <laughs> Lots of counseling. Um, that's the, I love when I get those emails. Like I never realized that you were a real, a real person. But well, there'll be people listening now that go, "Oh my God, he's real!" Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought he was just a just a, a voice on the on the on the video game. But those games were hugely popular. Now I'm not. I, I will confess to not being a massive gamer. But those were the that was the game that I played for for years and years. That was the one I, I kept going back to when there was a new one that came out. I thought I've got to get this. There's just something about that game that is so special. Yeah, it was good fun. We did GTA three and then into Vice City, uh, San Andreas, yeah. uh, Grand Theft Auto four. Shortly after that came out, uh, we came and you know gave you an exclusive look at episodes yeah. from Liberty City, which were the add-ons. And then, you know, the last um, few years we've been working on a game set in Sao Paulo, Brazil, called Max Payne three. So. Well, this is this is it. I mean, Max Payne is a is a huge huge franchise as well but it's not been around for a few years has it so you've come you've got a new chapter to it but the reason I wanted to get you on is because I think unless you're a massive gamer you won't realize the work that goes into these games because it's it's like writing a movie isn't it you it's even to... more than writing a movie to this point because you know when you play a video game you can make a bunch of different choices you can do a lot of different things and so we have to record all the different options for those decisions or when you're fighting somebody in the game you want to make sure that they have a lot of different dialogue if you were to shoot them in the arm you want them to say ouch you shot me in the arm <laughs> um, not you shot me in the leg um, but we also recorded that too <laughs> Um, so, you know, with Max Payne 3, we worked hard to make it a very um, intense cinematic action shooter. So it feels like you're part of a video, uh, rather part of a movie, you know, mm. like a huge action movie. So there's no, you know, people remember the old video games where the screen would go black and it would say loading. Well, what we do is we, we made it so it goes straight from those cutscenes into gameplay. And it's very fluid experience. So it's been exciting working on that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, with a, with a video game, you can do whatever you want in it. I remember there were days where I'd be angry and I would take a car and just run people over. Okay, so you can, you can do that. That was yesterday, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I've not got Gamescom, so I just that was that was me. It wasn't. Um, and also, but there's some days where you're feeling a bit more calm, and I would just take a bus and I would just go and pick up people and just drop them off wherever they wanted to. And that would be what I'd do in that game. Sometimes I'd play a mission, sometimes I'd just be a bus driver. Right, they would be like, the bus driver sounds like that presenter yeah, on exactly. the BBC, it's yeah. amazing. So there you go. But so Max Payne, for people who don't know about this sort of game, what what do they, what can you expect from, from Max Payne? Well, Max Payne is a different game. It's not a, an open world game. Like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, those were open world games where you can you know go wherever you want. Um, this, you do have a lot of freedom, but um, it's very much like an action shooter the, 
the first two games that came out, you know, eight years ago, um, it's been quite some time. The protagonist uh, is this guy who's sort of down on his luck and is really into sort of the drink and addicted to pills. And he's an ex-cop now after the last game. And you don't have you don't have to play the the previous games to understand what's going on. He gets a job down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, to do executive security, and everything goes very dark. And we were excited to do a game that was set. You know, people like, oh, do a game in London and New York. York and LA yeah. and and those are you know fun cities that we've done games in, but to go to Sao Paulo, man, that was an intense trip because I went down there and recorded people and just so that we would have authentic accents. It's and, amazing because people wouldn't necessarily realize that you go to those lengths to make the video game. Well, evidently the 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 dialects and when you get somebody screaming at you who's from Rio, it's completely different than <laughs> the the sound of somebody that's from Sao Paulo. So we wanted to because we never want people to call you know call out and say nah that guy he's from rio he doesn't sound like from i mean just how here everybody's got there's like 80 different kinds of british accents here you know you want that kind of you know you would notice it in a second if we're in a game it's like that guy's not from liverpool mm -hmm. um so we try to do the same thing when we have a, a game set in a certain city okay so max Payne 3 so it's back and and what what's different about it this time? Well, it's now it's on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. The previous game came out on the you know PlayStation 2 and yeah. well the PC. The processor speeds are amazing now. So um, you know it's it's the same Max Payne that people enjoyed from before in terms of the gameplay, but we've amped it up a lot. Um, we've done a ton of motion capture. We've made it very beautiful and cinematic. So you know when you when you play play it, it's sort of a a bizarre mix of kind of graphic novel cutscenes, uh, as well as you know very cinematic action shooter stuff that goes into slow mo. The Max Payne franchise was known for that, you know, the sort of matrixy bullet time thing yeah, yeah, when yeah. everything slows down. Um, it's quite fun to 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 do that, and some games have done it since. Max Payne pioneered it, but uh, we brought that back, but also added a whole bunch more. So you know, it's fun to jump over counters, you know, with bullets <laughs> blazing in slow motion. You feel like well, you a are superstar. you are the movie star. You That's are the, the movie star. Yeah. That's why, you know, video games to me are more entertaining than movies because in a movie I'm standing up in the in the theater screaming like I want to shoot that guy and I can't. Okay, don't do that. And if you if you got into Cineworld and do that, you will be ejected. Yeah. Okay, or arrested. So I please, normally please get thrown out that. of theaters for other reasons <laughs> I can't talk about. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot him. <laughs> Sit down, last night. Yeah, yes, down. please. So why, why? I mean, why are these video games so popular? The violent ones. I mean, why, why is that? Do you think? Well, you I mean, have like a rainbows one, like a nice one. I play rainbow games. <laughs> okay. I play, you know, games on the iPhone, and there's there's different games for different people, and in, you know, we play all kinds of games at. Rockstar, the games that we make, we like to make, uh, you know, games for adults. And just as you like watching, uh, you know, sort of gritty, interesting action movies and, you know, uh, psychological dramas and these things, it's quite fun to, you know, to be to be part of that. And and also, you know, you're taking out bad guys and drug dealers. Who doesn't yeah. like to do that? Well, exactly. Yeah. Making the world a safer place. C correct. That's the thing. So some of my favourite games, my favourite game ever maybe, is, is a bit old school, Brian Lara Cricket. Do you remember this game? No. Brian Lara Cricket was the game. It was it was brilliant. So good. And apart, is it about this from, game cricket that you guys play it's here? It's about this game cricket we play. Yeah. But it was it was it was great apart from the commentary glitches they had in it. So it would go you'd hit the ball up in the air and it would go, It's in the air and safe. <laughs> and out and it would be like an amazing glitch it would always happen nice. but I think they're more advanced these days I yeah well you know when you we have to work for years on games to you know to get that fine tuned experience yeah. to so. they, they made that in um, in three days I imagine yeah, yeah. But Laszlo, thank you for coming in today. And, yeah, uh, and Max dope. Payne 3 is what out on um, May the 18th, yeah? Yeah, so Friday on uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and uh, coming out in a couple weeks for the for the PC, for those people that enjoy the PC gaming. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in. I love the BBC. <laughs> so much more entertaining than American radio. <laughs> We're not giving away tickets. Everybody's dressed. This is fantastic. <laughs> I want to give you a show. We should do a show together. <laughs> I would love to do a show over here. Can we please put a delay button? Because sometimes I go off the handle. <laughs>